to provide logistics and transport of COVID-19 remains, including but not limited to refusal to pick up the remains subject to the policies and guidelines of the aforementioned LGUs or the ILG. Letter D, the DSWD shall allocate amounts for a funeral support fund allotted to the indigent confirmed COVID-19 cases and PUIs, regardless whether they are undergoing home quarantine or admitted in a public or private facility. DSWD shall allot 25,000 pesos per deceased for this purpose. Letter E, the LGU may release issuances or ordinances to put a price cap or impose a price freeze on funeral services located within their jurisdictions. Letter F, to reiterate, funeral services staff and personnel are granted exemptions from the imposed enhanced community quarantine. The said individuals may freely move and travel to ensure that the remains of deceased individuals will be given proper funeral services. Letter G, funeral companies are directed to provide transportation and or housing accommodations for funeral service staff. Next, guidelines, rules, and regulations of all LGUs declaring their respective community quarantine under paragraph A, item two of IATF resolution number 12 must be compliant and consistent with the resolutions issued by the IATF. Um, we have uh, with us uh, Secretary Ed Anyo, and he will be expounding on this later. Next, um, the IATF Resolution Number 13, dated March 17, 2020, Section B, Item 1, is hereby amended and to be read as follows, and I quote, Overseas Filipino workers, permanent residents of foreign jurisdictions and stranded foreign nationals leaving for abroad through any of the ports in Luzon shall be allowed to leave the Philippines without any impediment, provided that this provision shall not be interpreted to allow outbound travel to jurisdictions where travel restrictions are in place, provided further that departing passengers may only be accompanied by not more than one person when traveling to any international port, provided finally that the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration is hereby directed to provide transportation services to OFWs intending to leave for abroad. End of quote. Uh, lilinawin ko lang, no? Itong provision na to, inamend po natin para malift po yung 24-hour rule for outbound foreign nationals. Dahil po, uh, marami po sa ating mga foreign, yung mga foreign nationals po ay nagre-reklamo na dahil sa 24-hour rule, nung nakaraang resolution ay nahirapan po silang umalis ng ating bansa. So ang reminder lamang po natin para sa ating mga LGUs at sa lahat ng mga enforcers, hayaan na po natin, huwag na natin pahirapan ang mga foreign nationals na makaalis po ng bansang Pilipinas. So nilift na po natin yung 24-hour limitation para po mas maging madali para sa kanila na lumuwas at umalis na po ng bansang Pilipinas. Next, stranded passengers, whether Filipino or foreign nationals, are also allowed to book hotels and seek temporary accommodations for hotel and other forms of accommodations Single occupancy of rooms shall only be required for health workers and repatriated OFWs. Double occupancy of rooms shall be allowed for other individuals not falling within the aforementioned individuals subject to guidelines of the DOH. Outbound and repatriated overseas Filipino workers and stranded foreign nationals shall be granted free and unimpeded access to 
and from national government facilities such as airports, ferries, bus terminals, etc. Notwithstanding any LGU pronouncement to the contrary, the said free access shall extend to the vehicles carrying the aforementioned individuals in order for them to reach their final destination. No fee or any other requirement shall be imposed by LGUs in this regard. Ulitin ko po para sa ating mga LGUs, kung meron po kayo mga foreign nationals na stranded po sa inyong lokalidad, hayaan na po ninyo silang makaalis ng bansang Pilipinas. Sila po ay nakikipag-ugnayan na po sa kanilang mga embahada. Huwag na natin po sila pahirapan. Hayaan na po natin silang makaalis. Next, the OCD is hereby designated as the main coordinating body for all domestic donations relative to the management of COVID-19. The OCD, or Office of Civil Defense, is authorized to receive all domestic financial donations, which shall thereafter deposit the same to the Bureau of Treasury. The intended beneficiary agency shall then submit a request to the Department of Budget and Management to access such funds. Government agencies who likewise receive donations in kind are hereby directed to report the same to the OCD. The Presidential Communications Operations Office uh, will make the necessary communications to this effect. International financial donations shall be evaluated and decided on by a technical working group comprised of the DFA, the OCD, DILG, DBM, and Department of Finance. Next. The IATF approves the following recommendation of the Department of Agriculture, subject to implementation of strict skeletal workforce and strict social distancing measures. Number one, allow all farming and fishing activities to continue. Number two, exempt all healthy farmers and farm workers, fishers, and agribusiness personnel. Number three, allow agricultural supply stores and outlets and veterinary clinics to operate. Number four, reiterate unhampered movement of all supplies used for agriculture, including food packaging and manufacturing chemicals, manufacturing materials, sorry. Number five, reactivation of the Local Price Coordination Council or LPCC to strengthen the price monitoring and enforcement. Number six, upscaling Kadiwa ni Ani at Kita in support for food availability, accessibility, and price stability. And number seven, support the DA program, Ahon Lahat Pagkain Sapat or Alpas contra COVID-19. Next, the IATF um, endorses the recommendation of the DTI in allowing the full operation of those engaged in the manufacture of medicines, medical supplies, devices, and equipment, including but not limited to suppliers of inputs, packaging, and distribution to address the country's clear and present need for medical supplies and equipment. Next, the DTI shall enjoin concerned export enterprises that manufacture medicines, medical supplies, and equipment to supply at least 80% of their daily production for local or domestic use. And uh, lastly, the IATF strongly encourages companies to process payrolls online. However, for those who cannot, one payroll manager for each company is allowed to travel on March 26 and 27 for the purpose of processing their company payrolls 
covering the period until April 15, 2020. Before wrapping up, gusto ko lang pong i-revisit yung sinabi ni Pangulong Duterte kagabi. Papasalamat po kaming lahat sa lahat na nag-contribute in our efforts to address the threat posed by this virus. Especially yung mga nasa front lines po natin. Mga medical and health personnel led by our doctors. Na kung saan lima po sa kanila ang nagbigay ng ultimate sacrifice para sa ating bayan. Your nation owes all of you a debt that we hope we can repay in our lifetime. Aside from our health workers, si Pangulo ay nagpapasalamat din po sa lahat uh, ng in-charge sa pag-secure ng ating safety, mga AFP, PNP, those who continue to report for work to ensure that essential services remain open to the public, tulad ng mga groceries, banks, food establishments, delivery services, yung mga nasa gobyerno, mga nasa pribadong sektor, Lahat na nagsasakripisyo para sa bayan. Those who have extended aid and volunteered in their various capacities to help our people in this time of need. Mga kababayan, gera po ito. Digmaan na po ito. This is a war that will be fought in many fronts. And your cooperation and support are crucial in our efforts to beat COVID-19 and to save lives. Whatever our disagreements, whatever our misunderstanding, what is not debatable is this. The enemy is COVID-19. Yan po ang kalaban natin. And we have a greater chance of defeating the enemy if we work together and lift each other up rather than pull each other down. This is a time that calls for kindness, for compassion, for generosity, and for unity. Tandaan po natin ang sabi ni Pangulong Duterte. Kung magkanya-kanya po tayo, di tayo magtatagumpay. Together we can beat COVID-19. Together we heal as one. Kaya ulit ulitin ko po ang ating pakiusap sa lahat ng ating mga kababayan. Bahay muna, buhay muna. Maraming salamat po and God bless us all. Secretary, Secretary Anyo. Okay. okay. Question and answer. Na. Okay. Uh, Marcel Halili of TV5. Hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Secretary Nagrales, clarification lang po on the special power because I understand um, 18 million people yung target natin yes. na mabigyan ng 5 to 8,000 pesos. So yeah. how do we plan to choose who will benefit from this uh, financial assistance? Uh, probably given na yung mga kasama dun sa 4 piece, but outside yung 4 piece, how do we choose the beneficiaries? Uh, meron po tayong working draft um, na present nga po kahapon sa amin sa IATF. No? So we have this uh, working draft. It's a joint memorandum circular. Pero uh, kailangan po uh, ng final uh, pass, what you call it, final pass. So that's why uh, yung technical working group uh, will do a final pass today. Yan po yung kanilang assignment ngayon and then present it uh, to us again tomorrow. So by tomorrow, um, hopefully, um, Kung maaga kami matapos, then we can make an announcement or uh, whatever. Uh, siguro kahit anong oras siguro kami matapos, then I'll, I'll probably make a, an, an, an announcement, no? mag-bulletin, kahit wala ng questions. Uh, because we also understand no, the, the uh, essence of doing this very quickly. So time is of the essence. Uh, this is an urgent uh, need already. Uh, but uh, ayoko kasi pangunahan, no? kasi there might be some slight changes. But um, just to let you know that there's a JMC already and uh, we're just doing a one final, final pass just to make sure that everything is. Um, so, so basically, uh, dun sa kanilang presentation sa amin, yung technical working group, meron po tayong mga, uh, meron po tayong mga qualifications. No? So the qualifications are set, uh, clearly defined, kung sino po yung mag-qualify under this social amelioration package. Okay. Oh, 
I understand it's not yet final, sir, no? And, but of course, given na yung target natin yung mga low income, but at least do we also have plans on how to assist yung mga minimum wage earners, lalo na yung medyo malaki yung family nila? Um, like I said, uh, ayoko pa unahan because the social amelioration package is not just DSWD. Meron din DOLE, meron din yung DA. So lahat po yan kasama sa isang buong social amelioration package. Pati DTA, DTI kasama rin po dito. So uh, it's, it's different uh, agencies uh, using their different programs. So may different targets sila. So obviously in the SWD yun yung marginalized sector di ba but Dole also has naman yung sa sa mga workers so kanya-kanyang sector uh, meron po tayong mga social amelioration package Thank you sir um secretary Anyo uh, on the side po of the ILG how do you assess if the LGU is I mean adequate enough or inadequate in doing their jobs in implementing the community quarantine kasi it seems na ilang araw na po pero marami pa ring reklamo dun sa ilang mga cities. Uh, first of all, no, we set the guidelines through the resolutions of the national the national guidelines through the IATF EID. Uh, especially for Luzon that we are on enhanced community quarantine. Uh, nandoon na yung lahat ng guidelines. But sometimes na may mga uh, LGUs na nago overdo especially uh, doon sa pagpasok ng mga cargo. So, hinaharmonize namin lahat ito, including those in Mindanao and Visayas na meron silang uh, general uh, community quarantine. So, dapat hindi sila lalampas doon sa pinag-uutos ng national. Mabilis naman din ang kanilang adjustment. Uh, meron kaming 24 hours emergency operation center sa DILG. Lahat ng mga complaints against LGUs ay dumarating doon. So real time then ay uh, na-action na natin. And I'm glad to, to announce na yung mga LGUs na kinol natin yung attention, nag adjust kagat sila. Alam mo kasi sa LGU, lalo na yung mga malalayong lugar, meron silang tendency to overdo kasi inisip nila yung welfare ng kanilang constituents. But not knowing, ay uh, sumasobra na. Like for example, yung cargos, ayaw nilang papasokin. Yung iba dyan, pinapapasok yung cargos, ayaw naman papasokin yung crew. So, paano tatakbo yung cargo So, inaharmonize namin lahat yan. And we are open sa lahat ng mga complaints. At, uh, yun nga, wala namang LGUs na hindi nag-adjust. Lahat ay gusto rin makatulong at uh, in accordance to the IATF guidelines. Sir, some reports lang po from the ground. Doon daw po sa may daang hari sa Tagig, yung barangay captain mukhang naubos yung pasensya na malu daw ng patpat doon sa mga uh, residente na ayaw uh, sumunod. Ano po yung violation ng barangay captain and uh, Well, guidance? kapag uh, mayroong complainant dyan, then investigahan natin. Siguro napanood niya yung video anong YouTube doon sa India na pinapalo yung mga tao. Uh, dapat naman kasi yung ating mga kababayan sumunod, no? Uh, hindi lang naman buhay niya ito, eh. buhay din ng kapwa natin yung maililigtas. So, para walang, wala nang aberya, sumunod na lang tayo. Uh, this time, mag strict lalo yung ating uh, law enforcers at LGU sa pagpatupad uh, ng home quarantine. Uh, dadamihan namin yung uh, mobile patrols. At Sisiguro din natin bumalik sa bahay nila yung mga wala naman talagang exemptions at walang importanteng gagawin. Kung mag sila, then we will cause an arrest if necessary. Will you uh, impose, sir, penalty? Like you said, impo, ano, arrest? Penalty dun sa mga uh, residente na pasaway? Because some of the local officials are also asking if that's possible considering na nakaka first, second warning pero hindi pa rin daw sumusunod. Well, actually, sa ating batas dito ngayon na pinirmahan ng Pangulo, meron na siyang penalty clause. No? Hanggang two months, pwedeng ikulong. Pwedeng magmulta ng uh, hanggang one million pesos. Uh, tapos yung sa revised penal code ng uh, 151, no? yung article 151, kung mag-resist ka sa arrest, pwede ka rin ikulong. So, yan ay gagamitin natin kung kinakailangan. Okay, next question, Christina Mendez of the Philippine Star. To Secretary Anyo, sir, paano yung coordination sa national and local government dun sa pagmomonitor ng mga, mga those with the symptoms ng COVID? Kasi sa 
sa isang syudad, sir, may mag-asawa, nag-positive ang asawa. Ngayon, nang tenes yung, yung wife, nagkaroon na siya ng pneumonia, pero patu pinauwi pa rin sa bahay. Kasi it defeats the purpose yung stay at home natin. Baka mas lalong maraming mahawaan, hindi na, lalong mag-accelerate ang COVID. Well, unang-una, no, meron tayong Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams. Ang trabaho nito ay mag-monitor ng mga PUM at saka PUI. At uh, yung talagang meron ng symptoms, dapat talaga yan ay lalo na yung severe at saka acute, ay dapat madala natin ito sa hospital. Now, yung mga asymptomatic at uh, ito ay under PU, PUI dahil ito ay galing sa... Uh, ganitong bansa o kaya ito ay nakahalubilo ng isang positive. Meron din tayong inuto sa ating LGUs na meron dapat silang uh, tinatawag nating isolation unit. No? It could be a house, it could be a building, it could be an upper tail na kung saan ay doon natin ilalagay dapat yung mga uh, PUI natin at PUM. Ngayon, uh, yung ibang LGUs ay... Uh, Nakikita nila yung mga schools na pwedeng gamitin na quarantine area. So, hindi yan automatic. Kailangan mayroon siyang uh, pahintulot galing sa DepEd. Mayroon siyang dapat uh, mohuwa. Kasi kung ginamit mo yan, tapos nasira naman, sino ang sasagot niyan? So, hindi siya automatic. Kailangan ay may pahintulot. Ganun din yung CHED. No? Mayroon tayong mga universities, colleges, pwedeng magamit na quarantine area. Pero hindi mo pa pwedeng automatic yan. Kailangan may pahintulot ang CHED at saka DepEd. Pero sir, ang, ang sitwasyon ngayon na sir eh, kailangan mo pang pumirma ng MOA, magpaalam, no, mag-identify ng mga areas. Within the day, within hours. Uh, actually, hindi naman diretso sa ano, may district supervisor, merong regional supervisor. Sa level lang nila yan, may, may pwede na lang magawa doon. Sir, kanina si Secretary Nograles uh, in-announce din yung mga regulations on on funeral and wake services ng mga mga fatalities ng COVID. Yes. Sir, ano bang uh, worst case scenario na, na nakikita nyo at gaano kabilis na ang mga mamamatay? Well, ngayon ay uh, nagpalabas din tayo ng memo circular sa ating mga uh, local government units na kailangan ang ating uh, mga LGO ay merong nakahandang uh, uh, funeral na merong capability ng cremation. Kasi kapag uh, COVID positive uh, deceased persons or cadaver, dapat ay uh, ma-cremate natin ito within 12 hours. Kung siya naman ay uh, isang Muslim, uh, dapat ito ay ilagay sa isang uh, airtight uh, sealed bag at uh, within 12 hours at the presence of an imam who will uh, do the Muslim rites, dapat mailibing din siya kagat to the nearest Muslim cemetery. Okay. Sir, is there is is there a plan to expand yung uh, enhanced community quarantine to Visayas and Mindanao at this point? Uh, sa ngayon ay ang ating uh, pinakamaraming cases talaga ay nasa Luzon, no? Uh, lalo na dito sa Metro Manila. But in Visayas and Mindanao na naka-general community quarantine, uh, meron ding mga Uh, LGUs doon na na-declare na ng enhanced community quarantine depende sa numbers ng uh, positive cases sa kanilang lugar. Ang kailangan lang naman dyan dapat ay mayroon siyang consultation with the ILG and the OHs. The OHs because nasa kanya yung mga data. At ito naman ay uh, ating sinusuportahan. Uh, sa ngayon ay hindi pa naman kailangang buong Visayas at Mindanao para tuloy-tuloy pa rin naman yung kanilang normal na buhay, lalo na yung sa trabaho at uh, food production. But if there is a necessity uh, and depending on the development, uh, i-assess ng IATF yan. So how, how about yung going beyond one month, yung lockdown in Luzon? Uh, we're now on, I think, on the ninth day. Uh, so far, ay uh, okay naman yung takbo ng ating uh, lockdown or uh, enhanced community quarantine. We assess the performance of our LGUs. Uh, nakita din naman natin na okay ang uh, kanilang uh, performance. Ang, ang, of course, ang nakita nating problema, yung kakulangan ng ating uh, 
uh, test kits na ina-address naman ng uh, DOH at saka uh, siyempre yung uh, ating social amelioration na ipapinalize naman natin para masigurado natin yung especially yung tinatawag nating informal economy sector. No? Ito yung tinatawag natin ng mga no work, no pay. Ito yung mga informal workers, yung mga nagtitinda ng, ng sampagita, nagtitinda ng, ng mga ng balot. Ng, uh, yun, yan kailangan yan na uh, mabibigyan natin ng ano. Kaya nga doon sa batas na to, 18 million families ay uh, sakop sila doon yung tinatawag nating informal economy sector. Uh, sisiguro din natin na uh, uh, mabigyan sila ng ng uh, amelioration at ang manggaganap dito ng papel na to para sigurado makarating ay of course DSWD at saka LGUs. So ngayon ay pag napanalize natin ng joint memorandum circular ay uh, ibababa na natin itong mga uh, tinatawag natin assistance sa ating mga kababayan. Okay. Uh, thank you Tina. Next, uh, Mela Lesmoras of PTV. Uh, hi for Cab Seknograles po. Uh, sir, kasama kagabi si Pangulong Duterte sa IATF meeting. Uh, paano po yung mga naging assessment niya so far sa enhanced community quarantine? At may mga particular po ba siyang naibilin din sa inyo na uh, gusto pa niyang maging uh, ma-implement under ECQ po? Well, uh, unang una sa lahat, uh, nagpapasalamat siya uh, na naipasa na ngayon itong batas na ito. At uh, dahil nga po dito ay mas maging madali na lang po para sa amin yung implementation no? at ang panlaban natin against uh, COVID-19. So, uh, prinesenta din po namin sa kanya yung National Action Plan. Sumasangayan naman siya at uh, pumayag naman siya no? dun sa National Action Plan natin. So, ang makikita natin ngayon, gawa nung dahil may batas na po tayo, uh, manage na po natin yung ating... Um, resources and logistics and response. So kung titingnan mo po yung national action plan po natin, uh, two major uh, task groups po yan, uh, resource and response. So based dito sa batas na ito, if a farm out na namin sa task group on uh, resource, based sa batas na to, ano yung mga uh, angkop na provisions ng batas na to under sa resource. Tapos kung ano rin ang angkop dun sa para sa response. And then, syempre, uh, ilalatag na ng bawat task group no? kung ano yung mga resources available. Uh, tapos ilalatag din ng response group ano yung responses no? or actions na gagawin no? based sa batas na ito. But because uh, meron na po ito, mas madali na po tayo mag-source out. Uh, may resources na po tayo, lahat ng ating mga pangangailangan ay matutugunan na. Kaya uh, yun, lubos na nagpapasalamat si Pangulo doon at syempre yung ano nga, yung sa frontliners nga. Um, ang, syempre nalulungkot siya na may mga frontliners po tayo na nagiging casualties. No? Um, at uh, we wanna work on this um, effectively in a, in a way na kung maaari mabawasan natin yung mga casualties at uh, dadami yung mga recoveries and uh, kung anong mga resources ang kinakailangan natin para panlaban sa COVID-19 ay agad nating ma-deploy at ma-distribute. Okay. And for, thank you sir, uh, kay Sec Anya lang po, uh, problems uh, on ground naman sir, kasi yung iba nating mga kababayan, uh, may mga nalulungkot pa rin kasi hindi sila nakakatanggap ng food packs from their LGUs. Sir, just to set the record straight, uh, ano po ba ang bilin ng DALG? Lahat po ba ng residente kailangan makatanggap nito? At kung meron po ba kayong itinakdang deadline sa mga LGU na by this time kailangan nabigyan na lahat, uh, ano po ba yung mga bilin natin? Uh, Unang-una no, sa mga food packs. Ang uh, LGU ay uh, because of uh, the public uh, health uh, emergency and the declaration of the state of calamity, may authority na sila na gamitin yung kanilang calamity fund, especially yung quick reaction fund. So dito, pwede na nilang makabili sila ng mga food packs para may bigay sa kanilang mga constituents. Siyempre, ang unahin natin dito yung mga indigent families. Yung mga well-to-do, uh, wag naman tayong mag-expect na uh, tatanggap tayo sapagkat mas unahin natin yung mga, nang mga nangangailangan. So, ang, ang munisipyo at ang probinsya, meron silang mga respective uh, uh, 
uh, Calamity Fund and QRF. Uh, ngayon, kung halimbawa, kinapos na sila, pwede silang humingi ng tulong sa DSWD. Kailangan muna, magamit muna nila yung hawak nila bago sa national. Kasi uh, ang national, siyempre, ang uunahin niya yung mga nangangailangan. So, we, we are reminding actually all LGUs to utilize that, their funds now and distribute uh, food packs to all uh, who are needing this food. So, kung meron mang hindi nakakatanggap, ay uh, ibigay, pagbigay alam sa aming uh, action uh, centers and numbers. So, we will call the attention of the you know, LGUs. Okay. Thank you, Mela. Okay, live din po, tayo, live din po natin kasama si Yusek Verhere mula sa DOH. At ang susunod na tanong ay manggagaling kay Joseph Morong ng GMA7 at live naman via Skype. Joseph? Hi, uh, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Secretary Nagrales and Secretary Anyo. Sir, my first question is, how much money do we stand to access under this law, sir? Ang alam ko, I wasn't uh, part of the debate, no? but ang alam ko about 200, almost, in fact, 400, kung i-add mo lahat-lahat, no? almost 400 billion, kung hindi ako nagkakamali. Basta parang sinabi, during the okay. debates, hindi ko na nasundan eh, yung after na kasi we had a, a task force meeting also. But I know there's a 200 billion, then there's another 100 something, so, um, yun. So, so sabihin ko, 200 to 400 billion na pera, no? Yeah, Sir, okay. That, um, yeah. Ano po yung magiging immediate effect ng law because you will have this fund readily available to you, 200 billion to 400 billion. Ano yung pwede nyo nang pagalawin in terms of procuring mga testing kits o mga ano ba yung mga pwede nyo nang gawin na pwede nyo nang bilhin? Well, well, first of all, yung sa social amelioration package, no? Na gaya ng sinabi okay. ko, uh, fina-finalize na lang natin yung JMC Pag itong JMC ay na-approve na ng IATF at mapirmahan na ng uh, iba't ibang mga ahensya na kasama dito sa Joint Memorandum Circular, then we'll launch it immediately. No? Uh, we will immediately implement this and this okay. is nationwide, basically. At ang target po dito is 18 okay. million families, no? Sec yes, 18, 18 million, million families. families ang target nito. So, malaking chunk ng pera mapupunta dito. No? And that's uh, food assistance oh. plus yung cash assistance na ibibigay ng gobyerno sa lahat ng mga um, marginalized at yung mga mga uh, kababayan natin na nangangailangan. So, for social amelioration package, that's one. Mm -hmm. Next, gaya ng sinabi ko, um, yung ating tasking now is uh, the response class, the response task group and the task group on resource and logistics, no? resource management. Mm -hmm. So ngayon, ang resource management task group will now... Um, continue to identify yung mga needs na kinakailangan uh, ng different agencies, including yung response group. So whether that is uh, more hospitals, uh, more beds, more rooms, more ventilators, more PPEs, more masks, more testing kits, lahat po yan i-evaluate at ilalatag na nila lahat yan na ano bang needs natin based doon sa nakikita natin on the ground. Uh, PUMs, PUIs, um, and um, um, all of these uh, patients and uh, COVID-19 positives. No? And then, lahat ng mga pangangailangan ng frontliners natin. So, ilalatag nila lahat yan. Uh, and then, uh, because they're, they're the ones in charge of the resource, uh, then we'll work out a, uh, a mechanism kung saan uh, mare-report agad sa amin sa IATF or mare-report agad kay Pangulo or sa kinaukulang kagawaran or ahens or departamento ng gobyerno para purchase agad, gamitin agad ang pondo, tapos bigay agad sa resource management, tapos deploy agad no, for distribution. Mm. Uh, not only in NCR, but Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. So, dapat mabilis ang action ng lahat yan. We are in a state of calamity. We are in a state of um, mm -hmm. emergency. So, itong structure na in po ng IATF, this is the structure that is used whenever the country gets hit by a national calamity or when we are in a state of national emergency. So, uh, meron po tayong protocols dito, mer nakalatag na po yung, yung parang uh, 
uh, procedures for this. And so when we approved it, um, timing lang din yung pag-approve nito, pagpirma ni Pangulo nung batas ng Bayanihan Act. So that all goes hand in hand. Sir, can, can I bring you to April 12? No? After na, kunyari, ililift na natin siya. What would we have achieved by April 12? What we would have achieved by April 12 is we would have been able to contain the virus. We would have been able to probably identify what communities are negative. No? So, siguro, we, will, we want to see more communities na negatives uh, na walang COVID-19 uh, cases. And uh, kung saan man ang mga communities na meron or kung meron man mga COVID-19 ay na-isolate na po natin sila sa communities. And we're already uh, focusing on treatment na and for their recovery. So basically, uh, the victory that we want to happen is hindi na siya mag-spread. Uh, there are no, hopefully, no new cases happening. And uh, just like uh, in China or Wuhan, uh, na kung saan uh, wala nang new cases and then nakafocus na sila sa treatment. Okay. Sir, last three questions. And the reason why I ask that is, yung losses, um, three months yung effectivity ng powers ni Presidente. And then on the other, and, and another thing is you have 200 to 400 billion at your disposal. Um, my, my question is, are we operating on the assumption na hindi natin kayang ilift yung quarantine by April 12? May I answer the question? Uh, sagutin doon ni uh, First of yes, all, uh, what, do we, what do we expect to achieve after one month of uh, quarantine? When we start, uh, let me remind everyone that we are always one step ahead of uh, others, no? like Spain, Italy, mm. even U.S. Uh, if we do not implement draconian measures like this, uh, we would be ending like at least half of Italy's uh, condition now because of the exponential uh, growth of this uh, spread of virus. So, pupeding by the by the uh, five digits na tayo. Probably, baka mm -hmm. aabot tayo sa... Because remember the modeling na ginawa ng WHO, pag wala tayong ginawa na anumang measures, in three to five months, we will have 75,000 positive cases with 3% uh, mortality and about 5% uh, severe or serious conditions ng positive uh, uh, patients. So, mm -hmm. kung hindi natin ginawa ito, baka ganun yung aabotin natin. So, ang uh, ating objective is really flatten the curve. Flatten the curve so mm -hmm. that we can still, within our capacity to treat positive cases and serious uh, uh, cases of uh, positive patients. Because pag dumating yung point na wala tayong capacity, katulad ngayon sa Italy na nag-surrender na almost yung government, ay uh, ganun mangyayari sa atin na wala na tayong, kumbaga papabayaan na lang nating mamatay yung mga tao dyan because hindi na natin kaya even pati paglibing. So, and because we are not a uh, uh, very rich country like other countries na kayang mag-massive testing ng uh, ng ng, ano, ng uh, kits nila, testing kits nila, na like uh, South Korea, they can conduct 15,000 tests a day. Uh, the solution for us is to really to enforce the enhanced community quarantine so that everybody uh, will, will distance and will keep himself locked inside the homes. Social distancing, yung mm -hmm. ginawa ng, ng, ano, ng uh, Italy, it did not work. Why? Because the people will always mm. violate social distancing, even here in our country. Naka-lockdown na tayo, may sumisingit pa rin. <coughs> so, draconian measures ang kailangan natin para mag ng carb mm -hmm. and ma-contain natin, if not eliminate the spread of...
So I'll rephrase uh-huh. lang the question. No? Can we? Can we? I'll just rephrase my question, JB. Um, can we confidently say we can lift the quarantine? Uh, that we have to assess, but I'm confident that we can. Uh, but of course, mm. it doesn't mean that's the end of uh, the spread. We have to still continue the practice of strict social distancing. Important. Uh, mm. uh, for other... Okay. Yeah. For, for other uh, island, Luzon, and uh, Visayas, Mindanao, uh, important social distancing kung hindi sila nakalockdown. Alright, so just last two questions. Ano po yung plano ng ATF sa Holy Week? Will you be giving a regular updates still? Kahit Holy Week na? Hindi yata kami exempted sa trabaho <laughs> kahit Holy Week. Parang of course, kami dun, uh, <laughs> buhay ng mga kababayan natin ang nakasalalay dito. So if we need to work, we will work. Walang Holy Week, Holy Week uh, breaks po sa amin. Actually, okay. walang breaks ang ATF. Sir, okay, last question, sir. Okay, so last question lang. Um, to the public, no? At yung ibang nagtatang, paano pag nagkasakit ako, um, live ba yung paggamot sa COVID? Hmm? Libre daw po bang paggamot ah, yeah. ng COVID? Nandito sa batas. Na, nandito sa batas na uh, sasagutin sila. So kasama yung, kasama yung sa batas na pinasa po ng Kongreso at pinirmahan ni Pangulo na they will be uh, covered. Okay. Thank you, Joseph Morong of GMA7. Our next question, ay kasama rin po ulit natin si Yusek Verhere ng DOH. At ang tanong na ito mula kay Rose Novenario ng Hataw ay para huyate sa DOH. Hihingi ba ng tulong ang Pilipinas sa Cuba dahil matagumpay nilang nalabanan ang COVID-19 at nakahanda namang ibahagi ang kanilang paraan sa ibang bansa. Ano na ang nangyari sa plano ni Pangulong Duterte noong 2016 na sumailalim sa pagsasanay sa Cuba ang ilang opisyal ng DOH? Maraming salamat. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Secretary Nugrales and Secretary Anyo at sa ating mga partners sa media. Uh, ito pong Cuba na pinag-aaralan natin since noong 2016 nga po dahil ang Cuba sa good health system at dito po pinipractice yung iba't ibang mga voucher system at iba't iba pang mga interventions po para maging maayos ang isang health system. Hindi lang po Cuba ang nagkakaroon ng magandang response ngayon para dito sa COVID-19. Marami pa po tayong ibang bansa na gumagawa rin ito. And of course, the Philippines is very much open to partner with other countries so that we can learn from them. Actually, some of our interventions ngayon na ginagawa natin ay galing din po sa mga eksperyensya ng ibang bansa na ating uh, ina-adapt para po mas maging, uh, maging evidence-based po ang ginagawa natin and hopefully it will be effective for our country. Okay. Uh, isa pang question, sir. Ano raw po ang reaksyon? Mula ito kay Rose Novenario ng Hataw. Ano raw po ang reaksyon ng Palasyo sa pangamba ng NEDA na mararanasan ng bansa ang social at political crisis kapag tumagal pa? ang lockdown. Kaya nga napaka-importante uh, matapos na po natin itong digmaan na to, itong mm. gera na to kontra sa COVID-19. Uh, we have to end this uh, quickly. We have to end this very soon. no? Uh, kasi the longer it takes, uh, may repercussions po yan uh, para sa ating mga kababayan, para sa ating ekonomiya. Uh, so, kailangan matapos natin to. But again, hindi natin magagawa po ito kung wala pong kooperasyon ng bawat isa. At uh, kung meron pong nagva-violate ng mga guidelines, kung meron pong uh, pinapahirapan ng gobyerno, hindi nagko-cooperate sa gobyerno, then it uh, it gives us more problems and it extends no itong problema din ng COVID-19. So, gaya ng lagi naming sinasabi at laging sinasabi ni Um, check on yun, no? Kailangan maintindihan, maunawaan natin itong kalaban natin. No? So sabihin natin, nasa gera, nasa gidigmaan nga tayo. The first thing you have to do is learn your enemy. Know your enemy. No? Learn how it, how it moves, how it operates. Eh, gaya nga sinasabi lagi ni check on yun, itong virus na ito, hindi mabubuhay ito kung walang host. Diba? 
So kung isipin nyo na kalaban natin itong virus na to, huwag natin bigyan ng paraan ang virus na makapaghanap po siya ng host. So kaya po tayo nagsa-social distancing. Pero kung hindi tayo magsa-social distancing at uh, mananatili po tayong mga pasaway, ang mangyari niyan, makakahanap na naman ng host ang virus and so on and so forth. Kung hayaan po natin na hindi makapaghanap ng host ang virus tapos lahat ng mga infected po natin ay pagagalingin natin, mamamatay din yung virus eventually. That's how you defeat your enemy. Uh, kaya, um, so dun sa sinabi ng NEDA, ang mensahe po natin is that is the reason why we must end this war quickly and as soon as possible. Um, ang susunod na tanong mula kay Catherine Valente of Manila Times. Uh, for DOH, can we ask if there are plans to purchase more COVID-19 test kits, perhaps from South Korea? South Korea is among the world's worst affected countries, but one reason why it might have a higher number of infections than other countries is its aggressive approach to testing. It has already tested 300,000 people there. My plan po ba ang government to provide free and easy access to testing for anyone, not only for prominent and influential individuals and their families? Uh, yes, sir. No, ang una-una, may plano ba ang ating gobyerno para tayo ay bumili ng COVID testing kits? Uh, meron po tayong plano. No? We cannot rely on donations for for the rest of the time that we are responding to this crisis. Tayo po ngayon ay tumitingin na kung ano po ang mga compatible na testing kits para sa ating mga makina, sa ating mga laboratorio dito sa Pilipinas para tayo ay makapag-procure din considering that we will be given a additional budget for us to procure items or supplies that we will need for this response. So, opo, opo po, tayo ay bibili ng ating testing kits. Meron na pong walong commercially available, approved by FDA na testing kits at maaari po natin pagpilihan doon kung ano ang kailangan natin sa ating uh, mga makina dito sa ating laboratorio. Pangalawa po, yung idea po ng mass testing. Uh, ito po ay uh, marami na po ang nagtatanong ukol dito. Ang sagot po natin dyan ay hindi pa po sa ngayon ang mass testing na sa si Pilipinas. Unang-una po, ang ating mga testing kits, bagaman meron na po tayong 100,000, may parating pa po, hindi pa rin po yan enough to serve para po mag-mass testing tayo lahat. And always tandaan natin, ang experience po ng ibang bansa, katulad po ng uh, mga karatig uh, bansa natin, ang mass testing po ay ginawa, uh, pinili lahat ng mga may simptomas at iyon ang itines. Tapos yun po ang isolate Kung sakasakali tayong gagawa ng ganito, ito po ang gagawin natin, maybe pagka-sufficient ng resources natin para mas efficient po ang ginagawa natin. So for now, Mas testing, wala pa po yan sa ating konsiderasyon dahil po sa kakulangan ng ating mga capacity. And of course, yun pong ating laboratorio. So tandaan po natin, pag gumawa tayo ng testing, kung may kits man tayo, kung wala naman pong laboratorio gagawa. Kaya nga po, kinukompleto natin ngayon na magkaroon ng extension laboratory sa buong bansa. Para hindi lang po dito sa Maynila, hindi lang sa Luzon, dapat doon po rin sa Visayas and Mindanao, we can extend our capacity. Pag na-stabilize na po natin ito lahat sa laboratories natin, and then we can now decide if we can do mass testing or not. Okay. Uh, from Reuters for CABSEC and uh, Yusek Verhere, what is the total bed capacity available workforce of hospitals designated as COVID-19 facilities? Do they have adequate inventory of ventilators, respirators, PPEs, etc.? Do we plan to add more facilities given that some private hospitals have already exceeding capacity? Does he have or you have an updated data on how many people have been tested for COVID? Thank you. Ah, yes, uh, is it for me? Uh, yes, Meron po tayo ngayon, okay, as an initial uh, inventory, no? Uh, I just like to make this clear. Uh, kung nagumpisa na po tayo ng mga ating referral hospitals para tumangga po ng mga kaso ng may COVID, no? and they are se severe cases and uh, those of the vulnerable population, ang kinokomit po ngayon ng UPPGH ay hindi pa po buong hospital. Pag nagumpisa po tayo, this is going to be progressive kasi po kailangan natin intindihin na ang mga hospital na to meron din po silang existing patients na naka-admit sa kanila ngayon. So, maari po na 
during the course of how many weeks saka po tayo magkakaroon ng complete capacity of the whole hospitals that we are saying na itinatalaga para po maging referral hospital. So ngayon po ang ating UPPGH has already committed 130 beds. 100 for um, for those not requiring uh, critical services and then they have 30 na ICU rooms. For Lung Center of the Philippines, dati pa ho nag-umpisa yan, and they have dedicated at the initial 40 beds specific for COVID-19. Ito naman pong Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital natin, pinapast track po natin ang pagkukompleto nila ng kanilang mga kailangan para po makapag-umpisa rin sila. Tinitignan pa ho natin kung paano natin masisiguro na appropriate po yung care na ibibigay natin uh, galing dito po sa Jose N. Rodriguez Memorial Hospital. We are also looking at other hospitals now para po uh, madagdagan ang numero ng ating referral hospitals, especially in other regions of the country. Thank you, Yusek, for CABSEC and Secretary Anyo from Francis of Daily Tribune. Cordillera farmers are reportedly throwing away their products due to lack of buyers dahil sa iniimpus na checkpoints. One Facebook user was even quoted as saying na iba yung uto sa taas. EO at SOP against sa actual na nangyayari on the ground. Pwede raw kumuha ng pass pero paano pag di raw in-honor kasi nakatrike naka daw? Paano raw kung nauna ang lockdown kaysa guidelines ng pass? Paano kung walang internet si farmer? Kapag uh, farmers, kasama yan sa ating resolution, they are exempted. Kasi ngayon, tag-ani ngayon eh, no? Kailangan din natin ng food production, kailangan natin ng food, kaya in-exempt natin yung farmers. No, tell us kung anong LLG yung sumusuway niyan and uh, we will uh, do appropriate actions. No? Uh, we also disseminated this to our PNP. Sila naman yung nagmaman ng checkpoints. So yung mga farmers, yung mga plantation tenders, exempted sila because we need the food. Okay. Sir, follow up po from Francis. May report na may pulis sa MPD na, na nag-test daw positive sa coronavirus. May financial assistance ba o tulong na matatanggap ang mga pulis na nasa frontline din in case sila ay tamaan ng sakit? Yes, uh, uh, on top of the uh, of the yung nandito sa batas na sinasabi, meron din tayong tinatawag na comprehensive social benefits program na kung saan ang mga men in uniform ay binibigyan natin ng kaukulang tulong kapag ka in line of duty. So ito naman pagkakasakit nila ay in line of duty dahil sila yung nagsasagawa ng mga checkpoint dito. Ibibigyan natin lahat ng assistance na pwede ibigay sa kanila. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have another caller from Melo Acuna of Asia Pacific Daily. Sir Melo? Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, I hope everyone's well. I have a question for Secretary Nograles. Uh, China sent doctors to Italy and uh, Argentina, and a video conference was held yesterday uh, between Filipino and Chinese doctors at the Chinese General Hospital. Is there a possibility that we could accommodate Chinese doctors to help us in our fight against uh, the virus? That's the first question. Yeah, oh, no, man. Mm saan man tayo makakuha ng tulong, um, we ov obviously welcome any help no, that we can get from other nations, especially those who were successful in battling uh, COVID-19. So kung saan man tayo makakahingi ng tulong at saan man ang we're most, it's most welcome. No? Um, that's why uh, we stick to the... Uh, foreign uh, policy of the president no and that's been very successful that uh, we are friends to all enemies to none yan po yung stand natin mm -hmm. and uh, we hope that we can uh, count on our friends uh, especially in this hour of need yeah. thank you very much uh, for uh, secretary anyo uh, secretary good afternoon. good afternoon i received word from the national democratic front that they will also declare their own ceasefire Uh, in uh, compliance with the suggestion or the call of the United Nations Secretary General. How does the DILG look at this gesture from the National Democratic Front? Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, uh, our government declared unilateral ceasefire because we want to focus 
to fight this uh, COVID-19. But of course, uh, we assume a defensive, a strong defensive stance also to thwart any any attack uh, that would be coming from the CPP and PA. And we do not really expect what the action nila because, you know, the first I uh, nagparinig pa si Siso na it's not yet time. We ganito ganito. We don't really care what the action nila because we are really focused on uh, mm. fighting this COVID-19 and aim at saving lives of our Filipino people. Ngayon na nag-declare sila, well, that's a good development, but as, as, I, as I said, uh, uh, we don't really care kung anong action nila, basta tayo ay uh, nakapokus dito sa COVID-19, and we are committing our AAP and PNP to, to, uh, to concentrate on this fight. Yeah, thank you very much. For the Department of Health, I'm just as interested as anybody else how DOH monitors the conditions in the island provinces like uh, Masbate and Catanduanes. How sure are we that there are no PUIs or PUMs who may need uh, medical assistance? And should there be test kits in these areas, how would the RITM uh, you know, uh, receive uh, all these specimens considering the lockdown and there are no flights between these island provinces? Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, currently, uh, we have our regional offices, sir, in the different regions of the country, whereby we have direct coordination with our provincial health offices and our, of course, city health offices and municipal health offices. So if ever there would be patients under investigation or persons under monitoring within their respective jurisdictions, they are being monitored, they are being uh, taken care of. Uh, cared of uh, by our regions, our provinces, and our cities and municipalities. With regards to laboratories, uh, we already have opened our subnational laboratory in Davao and in uh, Vicente Soto, which is in Cebu. So if ever they would be collecting specimens from their uh, constituents, they need to send it to a much nearer place now, unlike before that they have to send it to our ITM. So they send it to Vicente Soto or to um, to SPMC in Davao. Uh, we are set to open our Western Visayas Medical Center, also our Bicol Public Health Laboratory, as uh, soon, uh, maybe uh, by early part of next week. So we are starting to extend our laboratory capacity, and hopefully for the other regions, we will have uh, more, and we will be able to extend more in the different uh, laboratories, like private laboratories, so that we can have more access to this testing. Okay. Yeah. Secretary Nograles, one last point, if you will. Um, with the emergency powers granted the president, uh, has the IATF considered nationalizing the Department of Health because it's been devolved to the local government units? Um, hindi pa naman namin pinag-uusapan yan. Uh, Siyempre, from a management perspective, uh, since devolved po yan sa LGUs, uh, mas mabilis din po yung response uh, ng mga mm -hmm. LGUs. No? Uh, kasi naka-devolve nga sa kanila. And in terms of accountability and responsibility, uh, ultimately, they're also responsible and accountable to their own constituents. So, from a management perspective, uh, I don't think... Uh, uh, hindi pa naman kailangan yan. Uh, right now, uh, the LGUs are quick naman to respond. Okay. Yeah. Salamat po doon sa inyong pagliliwaan tungkol sa mga magsasaka. Katanungan po yun mula sa Camarines Sur. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Melo Acuna. Ang susunod na tanong mula kay Belia Cariaso of Bandera for Secretary Anyo. Since we are in crisis, pwede bang ma-force ang isang mayor to resign from her post even if she is elected? If she fails to do her job or at least appoint a competent official to do the job for her? Yes, of course. Uh, that's in, within the power of our uh, president. Uh, if, if, uh, if a mayor or even a governor abuse this authority or defy an order, we can immediately put him under preventive suspension for 60 days. That's the power of the president, even before the investigation is, uh, is conducted. Or the president can also uh, dismiss any uh, local chief executive kung kinakailangan. So, yan ay nasa prerogative lahat ng ating Pangulo. Kaya, uh, alam natin na mayroong sapat na kapangyarihan ng Pangulo. 
Pero sa ngayon, nakikita naman natin, lahat ng LGU ay sumusunod, mga local chief executives. Naso sobra pa nga ng initiative, kaya binabawasan natin eh. Okay, sir, another phone-in question. May assistant din ba for middle income households? Yung special powers good for three months at yung low income households lang ang may 3 o 5K to 5,000 pesos na matatanggap. Marami din naman daw na middle income families ang affected ng work stoppage at ECQ dahil sa COVID. Um, we will be extending assistance but hindi siguro in terms of cash or food assistance no so there are other ways uh, to provide assistance no uh, tulad ng mga yung sa mga sa mga utang na pwedeng yung palugit uh, doon sa utang di ba yung grace period uh, these things uh, these things are also important no and these things matter also so um, anyway uh, constant naman yung aming um, pag assess ng situation uh, kasama din sa pag-assess yung anong maitutulong natin sa ating mga kababayan. Pero syempre, unahin natin yung mga marginalized, yung mga, um, yung mga nangangailangan, uh, the impoverished communities, uh, those are, who are in utmost needs. No? And then, uh, tingnan natin, no? because it's really a matter of, um, of budget and uh, it's really a matter of knowing also uh, saan ba tayo makakatulong sa which sector. So, sa middle income sector, there are other ways also that uh, government can, can help you. Um, if it's not food assistance or cash assistance, in, it's in other ways that we can help solve your problems habang nagka-quarantine po tayong lahat. Sir, from Jen Kabiling of Manila Bulletin, under the National Action Plan, will the government deploy more troops to assist with medical care? build temporary hospitals, deliver food, and enforce quarantine? How much budget is allocated to implement this program? Will the government expand the ex strict quarantine rules if disease outbreak escalates outside Luzon? Yung pag-deploy uh, ng uh, armed forces of the Philippines uh, to help, uh, obviously we need all the manpower, all the warm bodies, all the extra hands that, uh, that we can get. No? Lahat ng resources. Oh. Oh, siyempre. So, so lahat po yan, tinitingnan natin. Kaya nga, it's, it's really a matter of resource management. Titingnan natin anong resources ang kinakailangan. Tapos kung may gaps dyan, then we will know, o oh, sige, sa gap na to, sino pwede mag-fill in? So, pwede ba mag-fill in ng EFP dito? Pwede ba mag-fill in ng reservice dito? Pwede ba mag-fill in ng mga volunteers dito? So, it's really a resource management um, uh, programming the, the resources and looking for ano resources and kalangan sa ng gaps and then filling up the gaps. So uh, we have to work uh, very fast and we have to um, think very fast and we have to decide very fast. No? So speed talaga is key here sa laban na ito. Sir, from Sam Medanilia of Business Mirror, ilan, ilan pong BPOs and export-oriented firms ang nakapag-submit ng alternative work arrangements before March 22 deadline. He allow na po ba yung mga nakapag-submit to continue their operations for the dur durations of the enhanced community quarantine? Pangalawa, may decision na po ba ang IATF on the proposal of PAGCOR to lift the suspension in the operation of POGOS, electronic junkets, and VIP gambling? Uh, dun sa first question, that's something that's better answered by Secretary Mon Lopez of DTI. Mm -hmm. But he's been he's been on top of that, uh, on top of the situation, no, from day one. Um, so mas ma mas maigi siguro si Sec Mon ang sasagot dyan. On the second question, uh, no, we have not been discussing pogos uh, or anything about pogos sa IATF. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still enough. Still, uh, it's still prohibited. It's still prohibited. Okay, sir, follow up from Sam. My estimate na po ba ang government sa impact of COVID-related quarantine sa revenue collection of the government for the first quarter? <laughs> wala, wala pa. Wala pa. Hindi pa, or at, at the very least, I know our economic managers mm -hmm. are uh, doing the estimates on that, but it hasn't been reported to the IATF uh, yet. No, So the economic team, the economic cluster is... Um, they, they've been uh, doing their part naman, uh, in, this, in this war mm -hmm. against COVID-19. So they're, they're doing their jobs naman po, uh, as far as the economic 
assessment of the um, impact of COVID-19 at ano yung mitigation efforts. Tapos, um, nire-report na lang po nila sa amin yung mga uh, programs and policies na pwede namin gawin to mitigate uh, any adverse economic impact ng COVID-19 sa ekonomiya ng bansa. Uh, sir, may follow-up si Joyce Balancho of DZMM on, on POGOS. Uh, na-discuss na ba yung recommendation ng PAGCOR na pwedeng payaga na yung gambling arrangements na pwedeng mag from home? And if yes, ano ra po ang guidelines sa kanila? Wala. Hindi, hindi namin. As far as IATF is concerned, bawal pa po yung POGO at uh, any form is has not yet been... Uh, Bawal pa, uh, prohibited pa, and we have not discussed any other alternative, uh, whatever, about Pogo. It's not, it's not on the table. From Pia Gutierrez of ABS-CBN, many establishments are still implementing no mask, no entry policy. Paano yung walang pambili ng mask? May mga establishments din daw are refusing entry to people without barangay quarantine pass. Eh, di, eh hindi naman daw lahat ng barangay nag issue ng barangay quarantine pass? I will answer the question. Uh, number one, uh, this stage talagang advisable talaga ay nakamask ang ating mga tao at dapat six feet na yung ating social distancing. But uh, it should not be a requirement kung walang mask as long as naka-social distancing, dapat i-accommodate yan. Uh, dito rin sa mga supermarket, palengke, uh, I'm I'm uh, advising all LGUs to leave the wind, uh, yung tinatawag natin window hours for, for marketing or buying because kapag naglagay ka na window hours, kinukumpul-kumpul mo lang yung mga tao lalo. So it should be a 12 hours and uh, observing strictly the social distancing. So dapat ganon. Yung barangay uh, quarantine pass, there is no hard rule. No? Meron LGU na nag issue at meron ding hindi as long as nakukontrol nila yung movement ng kanilang constituents. Uh, this is a good control measure actually, pero kung ito naman ay uh, magpopor uh, sa mga tao na pipila at pupunta doon sa barangay, hindi rin ito advisable. May ibang LGUs na inihahatid yung, yung uh, quarantine pass sa bawat bahay ay uh, okay yon sapagkat hindi na nagkakaroon ng ng reason for people to get out. But with or without quarantine pass, ang tao ay dapat payagang bumili ng pagkain kapag siya ang representative ng pamilya para sa pagkuhan ng pagkain. Sir, follow up from Pia Gutierrez. Pakitanong din po, what they intend to do with standoff between LGUs and OWA who are transporting OFWs repatriated from various countries. OFWs need to observe 14 days self-quarantine, but since no domestic flights, they are unable to leave the Luzon. So OWA looking for facilities to house them temporarily. Some LGUs where these facilities are located don't want to accept unless the ILG gives a written order. Yes, uh, we are working out. We, we, we are working with uh, the OWA sa mga arriving uh, OFWs natin. Ang uh, sinasabi natin sa OWA na Find a place. If you found a place and then inform us, and then we will help you negotiate with the LGU to allow the, the quarantine of uh, our arriving OFWs. Okay naman. Mayroon mga initially ay uh, siyempre, alam mo naman, if you are a local chief executive of your town, your first tendency really is to protect your own people. And there are a lot of people coming from uh, from from outside, siyempre, hanggat maaari, ayaw mo. But pag makausap natin, and it is really a patriotic duty to help our fellow Filipinos, pumapayag naman sila. Now, kung mayroon pang mga ibang LGUs, then the DILG will uh, step in and uh, we will resolve any issue. Thank you, sir. From Trisha Terada of CNN Philippines, since permado na yung Bayanihan Act, Automatic na po ba yung declaration of state of national emergency o kailangan pa po ba ng formal declaration from Malacanang? Uh, sa reading ko kasi, state of national emergency is hereby declared over yeah. the entire country. Mm -hmm. So, yan ang binigay ng Kongreso, itong pinirahan ni Pangulo. So, it's already a common policy 
between Congress and the executive that uh, we are now under a state of national emergency, the entire country. Okay, sir, from Vance Fernandez of Police Files. Uh, for Secretary Anyo, alam niyo po ba na may mga pili lang po ang binibigyan ng kapitan namin ng mga groceries? Pare-pareho lang naman kami na apektado ng COVID-19 na yan, lalo na yung mga nanay namin, senior, may sakit pa, dapat priority po nila yon dahil may sakit. Tapos kami, wala ding trabaho yung mga kapitbahay namin. Nabigyan kami na hindi ang unfair naman po yata. Dapat magiging fair sila, tao din naman po kami na nagpa nagpapapicture sila after mabigyan kaya lang po hindi lahat meron kahit bigas lang po. Hindi tama yan. Yan yung mga tinatawang nating epal na mga barangay captain. I-report nyo sa amin ang pangalan, anong barangay, a-action na natin yan. No? At saka hindi rin na requirement yung voter's ID na para bigyan ka ng quarantine pass o bigyan ka ng, uh, ng uh, food assistance. No? Hindi, hindi malayo pa election, kalimutan yung election. But what you're doing now uh, will be the basis of the people whether you'll be elected or not in the next election. Tandaan yan. Okay. Sir, from Chris Crismundo of uh, Philippine News Agency, anong take ng government sa Avigan? Are we considering to import Avigan? And follow up na rin about the test kits developed by UP, how the government will support this home-developed test kits? Yung sa UP, um, if I'm not mistaken, they're already doing uh, field implementation. No? So from field trial, nasa field implementation na po sila. And if I'm not mistaken, yung field implementation uh, is, uh, I think uh, they're ready to do field implementation at 26,000. Uh, yan ang alam kong plano. I don't know if they've already actually done it already. No? Kasi from field trials, they go to the next level, which is field implementation. I think the best person to ask there would be DOST. Um, follow up, sir. Some studies said that multiple lockdowns in the next 18 months is possible to get the crisis under control. If this will continue, are we looking at extended lockdown or lifting the lockdown? Then the government will impose another rounds of lockdown in the coming months. Uh, I think we take it one day at a time. Masyado pang maaga pa yan. No? Uh, I think ang, instead of looking at that, I think we just really, really just have to concentrate on ano, yung social distancing measure, kung ano yung nasa guidelines na, cooperate na tayo. So dito muna tayo, focus muna tayo at the task on hand. Um, Saka na natin isipin yan. Anyway, we've been very transparent naman in terms of the ano, infection rate, yung mga na-infect, yung mga positive cases. So, mismo kayo mismo nakikita ninyo yung numero. At uh, in your own minds, na-assess ninyo yung situation yourselves. No? So, kami rin, uh, we do the same thing no? with all of the experts, uh, epidemiologists, Department of Health, and then we're looking at all the aspects, syempre, of governance. Kaya, uh, one day at a time, one okay. day at a time. Sir, from DWIZ, Joe Pelpeleño, more than two weeks na lamang po ay magtatapos na ang one-month implementation ng enhanced community quarantine. Kakayanin po ba, sir, na makontain ang virus sa loob ng nalalabing mahigit dalawang linggo? Uh, kaya nga po, we're doing everything that we can. No? Um, hopefully, with this law passed and uh, with the setup now, uh, the new setup now, ng, and then following the national action plan, then uh, we can... Uh, um, move uh, faster, we can uh, double up our efforts even more, uh, we can get uh, more uh, people um, and more resources, we can mobilize more people and more resources. Um, tinan po natin. Um, we'll uh, take it one step at a time. Um, for Yusek Vergere from Eileen Taliping of Abante, may isang ospital po sa lungsod ng Maynila Kinukulang na ng health workers dahil halos naka-quarantine na sila lahat. Ano po ang magagawa ng DOH para maalalayan ang hospital para maasikaso ang mga COVID patients na naka-confine doon? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Uh, meron po tayong mga minamapa na ngayon na mga, kung ilan ang mga apektado natin mga healthcare workers sa bawat hospital na meron tayo, both public and private, 
in the whole country. Meron na rin mo tayo ngayong inilunsad uh, na voluntary program for uh, for health workers na gustong tumulong sa ating uh, gobyerno para mabigyan natin ng lunas o matugunan natin yung kakul... Okay, medyo balikan natin si ano na, si Yusek Verere. Mahin na yata yung connection niya. Okay. Um, okay, sir. May... Okay, may isa pang tanong from Tina Mendez of Philippine Star. Sir, sa, sir, sa section 4, mm. letter H, uh, on the power given to the president to direct the, the operation of any privately owned hospitals and medical facilities, etc., at what point can the government take over the the operation of these privately owned hospitals? Um, siguro we will rely on the experts no, on the ground. DOH uh, will make uh, an our task, task group on response, task group on resource, uh, and then i, ano nila, they will uh, report either directly to the president or they will seek guidance from the IATF um, and then magdadeside ang Pangulo. Because it's just really a matter of yung resources eh. um, and then yung situation on the ground. Uh, obviously, you will need uh, to, um, to, ano yung word na ginamit? Hindi take over eh, tinanggal na yung to direct, <laughs> to direct. direct, the, uh, operation. direct the operation. You will need to direct the operation when you need the resource. So it's, it's, uh, it's on a need uh, basis eh. Uh, may, may, may add, may add. Well, uh, gradually, ay uh, i-apply na natin yan. Like, for example, initially, kailangan natin i-house yung mga frontline health workers natin malapit sa hospital. So, yan naman ay uh, uh, kasama sa priority natin. Ano? Para hindi na nagkukumute yung ating mga frontliners, dyan na sila malapit sa vicinity ng hospital. Uh, secondly, uh, of course, we are accounting our... Uh, uh, PUIs na uh, nagaantay ng test result, uh, dapat sa mga ito ay hindi na talaga, I mean, dapat isolate mo na ito. So probably we'll start looking no, with the IATF's uh, airport uh, facilities where we can put uh, PUIs and probably even asymptomatic uh, positive cases para maiwalay na sila. Not necessarily hotel ito eh. Pwede itong uh, arena, gymnasium, uh, yung mga ganong klaseng facilities. So, para hindi na sila makapaghawa, so, progressively, ay, uh, we will use that provision of, of the law. Uh, of course, based on the assessment and recommendation of the IATF to the President. So, yung resources, meaning yung doctors, pwedeng iramin, i-deploy sa ibang hospital o quarantine areas, Anong ibig sabihin nun, sir? Well, uh, that's why gumawa na tayo ng, ano, ng, ng uh, National Action Plan. Uh, yung IATF, which is uh, actually in charge of uh, policy making, yung mag-implement niyan, ito ng National Task Force COVID. So, dyan sa response, no, dalawang main job dyan, yung health response at saka public order. So, doon na yung, yung kung kinakailangan natin ng uh, mag, mag uh, focus concentrate ng resources at ng manpower sa ganito. So, meron na tayo ngayong uh, tinatawag ng mga task group na magpapatupad ng mga policies na inilabas ng IATF. Kasama na rin yan kung, kung uh, based on our assessment, kailangan na natin even our reserves tatawagin na natin so para makapagdagdag ng maraming doktor. Sir, right now there are at least three or four private hospitals who announced they cannot anymore accept COVID patients. Full capacity. Full na sila. Anong relevance nito, provision na to? Paggagamitin ng Pangulo. Ipupush ba silang mag... Anong, anong pwedeng gawin? Well, uh, sabi nga, ano, uh, ang, siguro ang makakasagot ay si Yusek uh, Roset. Pero uh, in these times kasi, kailangan na natin ng uh, stricter ano, uh, implementation itong ang uh, mga response natin, uh, like for example nga, yung ating pag-designate ng COVID hospitals, 
dadagdagan na natin siguro yon kung kinakailangan kasi kung tumataas. So dyan papasok yung, yung ating uh, uh, response, task group response. Now for, for uh, hospitals, ang makakasagot talaga niyan ay ang DOH kung paano yung strategy nila, tutulong lang kami kung paano i-implement yan. Siguro tanongin natin si Yusek Berhere. Yusek? Walang... With regard to these uh, which have announced that they have their capacity, uh, specifically, I think three or four hospitals already did that. Uh, Unang-una po, uh, tayo po, alam po natin ang sitwasyon ng ating mga private hospitals because when the surge ng mga pasyente po, nung tumasa mga kaso, nagumpisa talagang free po ang ating mga private hospital. So now we are announcing and we are encouraging all of those uh, Filipinos na meron po yung mga kababayan po natin na may mga simptomas ngayon, severe, belonging to vulnerable group, pwede po kayong tumunta sa ating mga government hospitals, equally capable po ang ating mga gobyernong hospital, meron pa po tayong mga kwarto doon. Antayin lang po natin na ma-stabilize po natin itong ating mga uh, nom nomero na mga nagpupunta sa ospital at antayin din po natin na, na isa patupad natin ang pagbubukas ng referral hospitals natin. Hopefully, uh, by the end of the week or over the weekend, para ma-funnel po natin ang mga pasyente, eventually ma-decongest ang mga ospitals. Uh, ngayon po, dito po sa mga pag-uutos ng ating presidente regarding this new uh, Republic Act, dyan po natin pag-uusapan together with nas other national agencies kung paano natin to better direct our private hospitals kung ano po ang mga dapat na maitulong nila sa atin. Ngunit meron na po tayong pagpupulong sa kanila, constant coordination, kung saan tinutulungan nila tayo. Ang kanilang commitment pag na-funnel na lahat ng mga pasyente or most of the patients sa ating mga referral hospitals, sila naman po ang tatanggap ng mga non-COVID patients sila po ang tatanggap ng mga serbisyong hindi na naisagawa dito sa referral hospitals natin kasi po naging COVID-19 hospital na sila. Okay. Yusek, uh, last question for Yusek Verhere from Maricel Halili. Hi, Yusek. Magandang hapon po. Follow-up lang po. Kasi kanina na-confirm na that Senator Pimentel is uh, COVID-19 positive and may kumakalat din po sa social media na prior to that, uh, bukang he visited an OB uh, doon sa isang hospital because understandably his wife is about to give birth. Right. And considering that he's already a PUI, uh, nagkaroon po ba ng violation doon si Senator? Uh, wala po kaming nare-receive nare pa na information about the chronology or the history of his uh, whereabouts when he was declared a patient under investigation. Uh, I'm not really sure po, or is it accurate to say that he was PUI or PUM? Did he exhibit symptoms during the time that he went to the hospital? Was it really that he was classified as a PUM when he interacted ba po, direct close contact to this doctor when he went to that hospital? We need to find out all of these things for us to be able to give you uh, an accurate answer. But for now... Uh, we will have this verified and we will be responding to you uh, in the next days kapag nakuha na po natin ang informasyon. You said, do we have figures lang po as to how many PUIs and PUMs we have nationwide? Uh, sa ngayon po, it's not, uh, we will receive the information by 4 p.m. Uh, what we have right now is uh, what we had yesterday. Uh, we already have about 6,000 uh, PUMs, persons under monitoring, and about 2,800 patients under investigation. So in total, if we look at, look at those two numbers, we are basically monitoring about almost 9,000 9, persons already. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Yusik Verhere. Clarification, yung katanungan ni Vance Fernandez ay galing daw po ito sa pinapatanong ng netizen. Okay, last two questions from Kat Valente of Manila Times. Kailan daw po magtitake effect ang bayanihan law and when can the people get the amelioration benefits and how? Um, I think this is, uh, it says here, uh, immediately upon publication. Eh. So, since napirmahan na ito ni Pangulo, I would think that uh, it should be published today, if not tomorrow, uh, and then up upon its publication, it's immediately effective. 
Yung sa social amelioration, uh, gaya ng sinabi ko, um, meron bang huling pasada, may last pass lang po today uh, ng ginagawa ng technical working group. Then, uh, tomorrow, magpipirmahan na daw tomorrow, sabi ni Sec Anyo. Uh, then they'll present to the IETF, then we'll launch immediately. Kailan daw, sir, maibibigay yung cash aid sa mga tao? From... Um, yung cash aid, uh, that's... Uh, I, I, Ayoko, again, ayoko pangunahan no? uh, yung mga uh, pipirma ng JMC. Uh, but based dun sa presentation kasi sa akin, uh, sa amin, sa IATF kahapon, I think ang unahin nga muna is the food assistance first. And then yung cash aid uh, to follow. Okay. Sir, from Raquel Bayan of Radio Pilipinas, tama po ba na dibigyan ng food assistance ng barangay ang isang residente na nagre-renta lamang o kalilipat lamang sa community? Uh, dito sa pagbibigay ng assistance, uh, wala naman tayong pipiliin dito. Kung kaya ng resources, bigyan natin yung ating mga kababayan. Kahit yan ay hindi taga riyan. Kasi uh, hindi pa pwede naman na dahil hindi siya... Kasi may mga instance, no? Uh, itong tao ay nag-work sa ganitong lugar pero nakatira sa ganitong barangay. Pero inabutan na siya ng lockdown dito. So hindi na siya umuwi sa barangay. Pakainin pa rin natin yun. No? Meron tayong resources, ibigay natin sa ating mga tao. Sir, follow-up from Trisha Terada of CNN Philippines. Will all of this refusal of hospitals to accept patients trigger government takeover of private medical facilities under extra powers law? Um, nasa batas naman po yan. No? Uh, of course, we don't want to use uh, those powers. Hindi naman yan take over, no? Uh, yung direct lang, yung direct the operations of, yun naman nakalagay dyan. But obviously, we need all the resources we can get. Uh, at lahat naman makukuha sa pakikipag-usap, eh. Hindi naman ito immediately pasok ang gobyerno. Hindi naman po ganyan ang gobyerno. Makikipag-ugnayan, makikipag-usap po tayo, no? At uh, alam ko naman ng mga, mga Pilipino matulungin ang ating mga Pilipino. Lahat ng ating mga kababayan, we're all here to help lahat gustong tumulong. So, I don't think there will be a problem. Itong nakalagay sa batas, this is just a just in case. No? Nilalagay lang natin dyan just to emphasize the urgency. But, kilala ko ang mga Pilipino at tayo lahat. Um, everybody wants to help. Lahat tayo nagsasama-sama dito sa laban na to, sa digmaang ito. Kaya, um, hindi man siguro kailangan pumunta pa doon. Everybody wants to help. Uh, lahat po gustong tumulong. So, Um, magtulungan na lang po tayong lahat. Okay, sir. Yan po yung huling katanungan. May panghuling mensahe po ba kayo, Secretary Nagrales at Secretary Anyo? Siguro I join Secretary Anyo and the rest of the team. No? Um, na Again, emphasizing na tayo mga Pilipino, tayo magkakampi dito. Lahat tayo magkakampi dito kontra at laban sa COVID-19. Sa digmaang ito, ang gusto lang nating talunin yung COVID-19. Hindi po ang isa't isa lahat po tayo magtulungan, lahat po tayo magsama-sama. Uh, yung frontliners po natin, um, nandyan po sila, nakaset up na po sila. Ang mga frontliners are doing their best. Sa mga frontliners po natin, yung mga bayani po, ang mga tunay na bayani ng bansang Pilipinas, uh, wag po kayo mag-alala, nandito kami para suportahan, para tulungan kayo. Alam namin, we're, we're constantly monitoring lahat ng ginagawa ninyo, at kumagawa kami ng hakbang para matulungan kayo no? uh, in terms of resources, in terms of manpower, in terms of equipment. Concentrate on saving lives. Kami, kami na lang po bahala maghanap ng paraan na masuportahan po kayong lahat. At yung hindi naman pong frontliners, the contribution that you can give in this war against COVID-19, stay at home, huwag mag-spread ng fake news. Suportahan natin ang lahat ng mga nagsasakripisyo para dito. Give your sacrifice also, no? yung sakripisyo ninyo. Stay at home. Bahay muna, buhay muna. Yan po ang panawagan namin sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat po. And God bless us all. Secretary. Well, uh, first, gusto ko lang magpasalamat sa ating mga senators and congressmen sa pagpasa ng Bayanihan Act. Uh, in just one day na ipasa nila yung batas, napatunayan nila na kaya pala talaga kapag ka nagkakaisa at para sa kabutihan ng bansa. So talagang I really praise our senators and congressmen for uh, really a job well done. Tapos uh, of course uh, we salute our health workers, no, our frontliners. 
uh, we will do everything to support you so that you can do your job. At sa ating mga pulis sundalo na mga nagmaman sa mga uh, sa mga checkpoints, uh, sumasaludo rin ako sa inyo. At sa ating mga local government uh, officials, ang ating mga governors, mayors, barangay captain, uh, maraming binabas pero gawin nyo lang yung trabaho ninyo uh, and we will save this country. And of course, our national government na talagang since day one ay nandito na. And for our countrymen and women, uh, just do your patriotic act. Stay at home. No more, no less. Just stay at home. And uh, God bless us all. Thank you, Secretary Anyo. Thank you, Secretary Nagrales at kay Yusek uh, Verhere. Maraming salamat. Malakanyang press corps, R RTVM at PTV. Diyan po nagtatapos ang atin pong IATF Laging Handa Virtual Presser.